I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on statistics. In this video, we will focus on finding mean and standard deviation for the data which is in fact continuous. We will also see how the data may not look like continuous but uh, we could work with it in that fashion. So the focus here is basically on mean and standard deviation. Well, in case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. Also, check our new videos on the website. The question is, the table shows mass of 90 Atlantic salmon in pounds. So when I write it shows in pounds, it really means the figures are rounded, correct? So rounded to nearest pound. Calculate the mean and standard deviation for the mass of the fish. How many fish weigh more than one standard deviation above the mean? So these are the two questions to be answered, A and B. Data shows that mass in pound is 8 for 12 fish. So that is the frequency. 9 for 14, 10 for 26, 11 for 16, and 12 for 22. Let's try to understand this data before we even begin to answer. So when I say 8, it means what? Think like this, that we have a class interval. of 7.5 to 8.5, correct? So that is the meaning of 8. For 9, it means all the fish whose mass was between 8.5 to 9.5 pounds, we have treated that as 9. You get the idea. So likewise, that becomes your class interval. So that makes the data continuous. Do you see that? So, so basically, we have information here, which is not just the mass 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Strictly speaking, we have been considering the mass between 7.5 to 12.5, and then categorizing them, taking the center values. So the values which are given are the center values of this interval. You get the point. So we'll focus that the mass of the whole class interval has been treated to be right at the center. Strictly speaking, it is actually distributed uniformly. Okay, so normally we assume it to be uniformly distributed. in the given class interval. You get the idea. So now we need to find the mean and standard deviation. To find the mean will work like a weighted mean, right? So there are eight, there are 12 fish with eight pound weight. So the total weight, which I'm calling as X I, for this group is product of this mass M into F, right? So we'll multiply them, make a column, add them all. And total number of fish can be counted here, which you also know is 90, and we can find the mean. So that is the formula for mean. For standard deviation, we have a finite population here with equal probabilities at all points. This is kind of important to understand. If that is the case, that is that we are working with a population with equal probability at all points, then this formula can be used, otherwise not. So this formula is only used when you are finding standard deviation for finite population, right? We have only 90 of these elements with equal probability at all points. Alternate way of saying the same thing is that we are assuming 
that the distribution is uniform within the given interval. So it becomes a continuous data, as you can see here. Do you see that? So we the data actually varies from 7.5 to 12.5. Let's be very clear on this part. As that is going to help us to answer the second question, which is how many fish weigh more than one standard deviation above the mean? You get the idea. So if I say more than 11, then it could be 12. This group, more than 11, right? It could be 22. But if I say more than 11 point, let's say 8, in that case, this number may not be 22. And we may have to estimate this number. You get the idea. So that is the real question, which is part B. Now, first, we'll have to definitely find the mean and the standard deviation using our formula. So from the formula, you can see that standard deviation is square root of difference between the average of the squares of the values and the squares of the average value. Do you see that? So it is a difference between these two as written here. So it is the difference between the average of the squares of the values and the square of the average value. And note, this formula works when we are doing distribution is assumed to be linear with equal probability at each point. So that is very important to understand. Now, with that in mind, I'd like you to pause the video, answer the question, and then look into my suggestions. So let's first find mean. Now to find mean, we're going to multiply 8 and 12, make up a column, which I'm calling as xi, so we get 96. And these are the numbers which we get after multiplying 9 and 14, we get 126, 10 times 26 is 260, 11 times 16 is 176, 12 times 22 is 264. So when you add them up, you get the sum of the mass total. And when you add the frequencies, you get the number n, correct? So now we know that n is equal to 90, correct? So dividing by the value of n, the total mass of 922, we get the mean. So 922 divided by 90 gives us 10.24 as the mean. Okay. So now we have mean as 10.24. Now let's find the standard deviation. The formula to be used is given here for you. So, so the first step here is sigma xi is known to us, which is, a, this is sigma xi, the sum of this column, the product of m mass and the frequency, we just add them up. So that is given to us as 922. Let's now find sigma x square. So what is sigma x square? To find sigma x square, we multiply the frequency by the square of mass, right? So, so the formula given to you here is mass squared times fi. So 8 squared times 96. So we get this number by doing 8 squared times 96, and that is equal to 768, correct? Then this number here will be 9 squared times 14 will be 1134, and then we have 10 squared times 26, and that is 260, right? Oh, sorry, 2600. 11 squared times 16 is equal to 1936. Similarly, we do 12 squared times 22, which is 3168. And then you add them up. Okay. So when you add them up, what you get is sigma xi squared. And this total is 9606. Now we know that standard deviation for finite population with equal probabilities at all the points is given by this formula sigma xi square over n minus sigma xi over n whole square. Substituting the two values which we just found, we get our answer. n is 90 for us and the value is 1.34. So we now know that standard deviation is 1.34. The mean is 1024, correct? 
So we now know that the mean is 10.24 and the standard deviation is 1.34. With that in mind, let's now answer part B, which is how many fish weigh more than one standard deviation above the mean? So when you add them up, what do you get? Well, let's try to add them. So if I add this to the standard deviation, what do I get? I get this as 10.24 plus 1.34, right? So that is 11.58. Now above 11.58 means above here. Now think like this. These two groups are not really 11 and 12, correct? So this category 12 is basically from 11.5 to 12.5, correct? So 11.58 means we are looking at some point from here, right? So that means that 22 is the expected value, but that may not be the correct answer. So we are now looking to how do we find that how many fish weigh more than one standard deviation away? Is that clear to you? So now let's get to part B, where we'll now focus on how many fish weigh more than one standard deviation above the mean. So as we were just calculating, more than one standard deviation away from the mean means, you add 1024 with 1.34, these are mean and standard deviations, you get 1158. Now, strictly speaking, the last class in which this may fall is the one which could be written as from 11.5 to 12.5. In fact, it is, since the figures are rounded. Do you see that? So we have done the rounding. So therefore, 12 really means, 12 really means we are actually looking into from 11.5 to 12.5. That is what it means. Now, we want to find exactly how many fish are above 11.58, 11.58. And we have known one thing, that we have used the formula of standard deviation on the base that it is a continuous data. We will assume linear distribution of 22 fish in this interval from 11.5 to 12.5 to find the position of the fish at 11.58. You get the idea. So once we find the position of the fish as 11.58, then 90 minus that will give us the answer. Perfect. So this is the basis on which we are get, going to calculate how many fish are above a standard deviation above the mean, right? So that is what it is. So basically, we want to now see this interval starts with 11.5, right? It starts with 11.5, therefore, and we want to find the position of the fish at 11.58. So 11.58 minus 11.50 within this interval, whose length is one unit, 12.5 minus 11.5 should be equal to, let that position be S, S minus 68, because there are already 68 fish which are below this, right? So out of 90, 60 or 8 are below this. And we need to figure out that within this, from 90 to 68, where is the position for the fish with the length 11.58? Perfect, so S minus 68. So that is how we get our equation. And now we can actually solve this equation. Difference in the numerator is 0 0.08, divide by 1 equals to s minus 68, cross multiply and then add 68 to get the value of s. So s is equal to 22 into 0 0.08 plus 68 and that gives you 69.76 which is close to 70. That means if you have put the fish in increasing order of their mass, then the 70th fish has the mass of 11.58. Above that is one standard deviation above the mean. So from the total of 90, we'll take away 70, we get 20 as our answer. And therefore, out of these 22, 
there are 20 which are a standard deviation above the mean. You get the idea. So that is how it is to be solved. I hope the concept is clear. Feel free to write your comments, share your views. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.